Welcome, my friends, to this edition of Whiskey and Conversation in the company of your Italian cowboy, Romeo of the Rodeo, and Italian DJ Nick. This month, we got the chance to sit down with the likes of Georgette Jones, the Steel Drivers, Dew West, and the Oak Ridge Boys. So, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversations. That was Georgette Jones with Till I Can Make It On My Own, taken from her great album by that same name. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your cowboy Casanova, Romeo of the Rodeo, and Italian DJ Nick. And it is truly a great honor and privilege to be speaking today with the one and only Georgette Jones. Hey, Georgette, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great, thanks, Georgette. And may I say it's truly a pleasure to have you with us today. Well, I'm excited to be on here. I appreciate so much having the time to talk about the special event we have coming up because it does mean an awful lot to me and to our family. So I just appreciate everything we're doing to help us out. Oh, it's definitely uh, a pleasure on our end, too. And, you know, you just um, touched up on that right there, Georgette. Could you give us a rundown on this amazing event that you will be hosting on June the 2nd in Nashville? Yes, it's on June the 2nd, which is a Monday, leading up to CMA Fest in Nashville at the Hard Rock Cafe upstairs in the ballroom there. And we have a lineup of a lot of really wonderful artists that are going to sing for us and perform. Um, I'm also going to be doing some singing myself. We have a silent auction. Um, All of this is in benefit for cancer awareness and research and in the honor of a good friend of mine, actually one of my best friends for over 20 years who passed away from cancer last October. Her name was Denise Jernigan. So it's a very, very special event for us on many levels. Um, We've had many people in our family who've been touched by or hurt by cancer in the past. So just the event for that as well as for my friends just makes it even that much more special. Um, we're going to have a lot of singers like um, Billy Yates and Buddy Jewell, Ashton Shepard, Daniel Peck, Jan Howard, um, Bobby G. Rice, many, many, many others. It's a very long list of people that we're going to have actually listed on my website, at, at website as of tomorrow. So if people can check and see on uh, georgiatjonesmusic.com, they can get a full lineup of all the artists that will be there as well. Well, hey, it definitely sounds like an amazing lineup, and I, I definitely endorse this event totally, Georgette. And, you know, I also want to say more power to you for organizing something like this and, you know, being, you know, even more sensitive to such an important cause. Well, I appreciate that, but I have to tell you, when, when you know, I've had a couple of relatives who passed away from cancer, two aunts have passed away from cancer, and, but my, my friend Denise was such a special person to me, and I know her family has been through so much, and, I can't do anything to take the pain away, and I certainly can't do anything to bring her back. But the one thing that I know, she loved music. Her whole family did. And we just thought maybe if we could organize something that would be special in her memory, um, that we could also raise money for something very dear to all of our hearts, and it would be um, a worthwhile event. Definitely, and I definitely agree with you. And I, uh, you know, invite all our listeners out there. If you get your the chance and you're in the Nashville area, be sure to get yourselves to the venue and, ch- and be a part of this amazing, amazing event. And you, of course, Georgia, you know, we know how much you love music, of course. And you were born into an incredibly musical family, of course. You're the daughter of George Jones and Tammy Wynette. And when it actually, uh, you know, comes to to your parents and so on, how would you describe what it means to you being the daughter of of two such great artists like these? Well, it's, it's kind of funny for me to even answer the question a little bit because first and foremost, I mean, they were they were mom and dad to me and it, it really took me many, many years. I was probably in my 20s before I really realized who they were as, as artists. Um, besides who they were for me, it's just my mom and dad. So um, it's a great honor for me to be able to perform their music and to, especially now that both of my parents are gone, it's amazing for me to be able to try to keep their memory and their music alive to so many new people who, even some who may not have ever even heard their music. So it's it's truly something that I love to do, and um, I always look forward to doing it. It's great to meet new people and expose them to their music. Definitely great, and you definitely do an amazing job. I mean, you know, I've heard, of course, your renditions of their songs, and you definitely do them more than justice. And when it actually comes, you know, to your personal favorites, what you, would you say are your personal favorite songs of theirs? Wow, um, I would I always tell people, as far as my moms are concerned, I always say it's the two tills, so I can make it on my own until I get it right, both of which um, I've always loved. Those two of my favorite of Um My mom and dad together, I love uh, Something to Brag About and Take Me. They're two of my favorite of their duets. And my dad, I would have to say, Walk Through This World With Me. And then on a funnier note, I always love what we, we called it, the Corvette song, but it's the one I loved back then. 
right, and definitely great choices. And, you know, when it actually <laughs> comes to, you know, this latest album of yours, Till I Can Make It On My Own, could you give us a little bit of a rundown on, you know, for those who have yet to hear it, and we definitely have to put a naughty, naughty here on those who haven't heard it yet, but, uh, <laughs> um, for, for, you know, for those who haven't heard it, could you give us a rundown on what Till I, Can, Till I Can Make It On My Own is all about? Yes, um, for many years, I wanted to do something in honor and tribute for my mom, her music, and it was important to me when picking out the songs for this record that I picked out things that people were certainly familiar with, but I also wanted to pick out a few songs that maybe they weren't very familiar with that I'd always grown up listening to and loving very much on my own. So I tried to get a good mix of that. There are probably a couple of things in there that maybe they uh, weren't aware of, one called Staying Home Woman. And another, um, something to brag about, people are more familiar, I think, with the Dolly and Porter version of that than my mom and dad's version of that song. But those those songs are just ones that I loved so much growing up, I wanted to make sure they was included. But it, in the record, we also have several family photos and pictures and um, that are just personal. And my mom was absolutely famously known for her cooking. In fact, her most famous dish probably around Nashville and people who knew her was her banana pudding. So we actually even included mom's banana pudding recipe in there just because we thought it would be a neat little personal touch from mom to um to the fans. Oh, that is incredible. I, I really, really like that's an awesome touch indeed. And you have some great guests on this album. And how did you go about picking them? Well, I have um, several people that I have grown up around and that I always just admired and respected very much their talent. And thought that it would be nice if I could actually pick those people who were personally important to me to um, to do those things with me. So um, several people that I worked with from Heart of Texas Records, uh, Justin Trevino and um, Tony Booth and others have you know were able to participate on that with me. And um, Amber Digby um, as well, who's amazingly talented in her own right too and is doing very well on her own now. But I, I also picked someone who was relatively unknown, but not unknown in Nashville. He's an incredibly talented singer and he works a lot downtown singing and a uh, very talented musician as well and songwriter. Um, Keith Nixon did something to brag about with me and he actually plays bass in my, um, my band and travels with me and does a lot of duets with me on the road. Hey, that's incredible. Great, indeed. And, in, and also, added to the music, you've also, you know, you also starred in the series Sordid Lives, where you actually played your mother's ghost. And what was that like for you? I have to say it was one of the most amazing um, experiences for me ever, because I had done very little acting, just a little bit here and there in high school, which can't account for much of anything, really. But I, I was terrified at first um, at the thought of, of doing it because there were some many wonderfully talented people there. Rue McClanahan, Olivia Newton-John, Bonnie Bedelia, Leslie Jordan. I mean, just some really talented actors and actresses. And I have to say, they all made me feel so comfortable. They were all very nice and helpful. And it was just amazing to really watch them do what they do. It's much, much harder um, than what people may imagine um, on a set like that and watching people do, you know, acting for real. So um, they, they're hats off to all of them. It was an incredible experience. Oh, awesome. And, uh, you know, and when it actually comes, you know, to the summer, outside of, of course, this great event that you'll be holding on June the 2nd, what are your plans for the summer? We have uh, lots of events really planned here and there. We're traveling all across um, the state, and um, we plan to go back to Canada early next year. But um, lots of things that we actually um, have in process of being able to announce. Unfortunately, I can't announce a couple of things. Maybe you can call me back in about a month. I've got some exciting things happening that I can't wait to um, to tell people about. But if they check back in on the website um, or maybe on my Facebook page or Twitter, we should have some really exciting announcements within the next month. Oh, well, you definitely have us on the edge of our seats here, Georgia. <laughs> you definitely know how to tease, that's for sure. And, uh, um, and when it actually comes, you know, to the fans and the listeners and such, what would you like to say to them? You know, I, I have to say it's something that's very personal um, when you get to know your fans as well, because my mom, especially, I grew up mostly with my mom, but to her and to me, um, the fans are everything. We get to do what we do because of them. So um, we enjoy getting to meet them when we're on the road. It's always a pleasure to get to hear what they say, whether they like this or they don't like that. And I would just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has supported both my parents and my music career as well. And I hope to get to meet each and every one of them down the road somewhere. They're very much appreciated. 
Oh, well, and it's definitely well deserved. I will say that. And uh, you know, we're actually going to be seeing you out here with another great song. You know, which, as I was saying to you earlier, you definitely did more than justice to, which is "Stand by Your Man." And when it actually came, you know, to taking this song on and doing it and so on, um, how did that feel to you? I mean, did you feel that it came naturally to you to be able to do this, or you know, did it take you some time, should we say, to come to grips with this song? Well, to be honest, it's kind of a little of both. It's something that I grew up listening to my whole life, and I've always sang this song, and so I was very comfortable and familiar with it. But to do it on a tribute CD or when I perform it live, it means so much more because it, it really is important to me to be able to perform it well and to honor my mom. So I, I do get a little bit nervous at times thinking about it because I want to make sure that I do the very best that I can. So it, it means a lot to me that, that you liked my version of it. So I, I appreciate that. Oh, well, it definitely is awesome. Well, my friends, you have heard it from the, this great lady herself, Georgette Jones. Be sure to get yourselves to Nashville on June the 2nd and show your support for this awesome cause. We are going to be going into this great song. This will be a Stand By Your Man, the Georgette Jones version, of course. And uh, you are, of course, tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your Italian DJ, Nick. And Georgette, may I say thank you so, so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Congrats on everything that you're doing and continued to success with everything that you do. Oh, thank you so much. I hope one day I'll get a chance to meet you in person. I appreciate everything. We, we definitely look forward to that. Well, my friends, as I was saying, enjoy this great tune. We'll be right back after this. That was The Steel Drivers with I'll Be There, taken from their latest album, Hammer Down. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your Italian cowboy and Romeo of the Rodeo, DJ Nick. And it is with great pleasure that we welcome Richard from this incredible bluegrass band, The Steel Drivers. Hey, Richard, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks, Richard. And may I say thanks so much for taking your time out to be a guest on the show today. Well, it's no problem. It's a beautiful day here in Nashville. Uh, I, I, I couldn't be staying at any better way. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Well, you know, we just heard this great tune from the, the band's latest album, Hammer Down. And as far as this uh, album goes, could you give us, um, tell us a little bit more about Hammer Down? Well, it's, uh, it's the first record that we've done uh, with Gary uh, singing everything. All right? I mean, he's been in the band quite a while. It took us it took us a while to work up all the material. That uh, that song was written um, by Gary and uh, John uh, uh, John uh, John Paul uh, of uh, the Civil Wars, John Paul White. And uh, it's a it's a gorgeous song. It's a different song. And, uh, it's probably different. The most different thing that we've uh, ever done band wise. Um, and I just love it. I, I love the arrangement. I love everything about the song. And would you say that um, just like this song, Hammer Down, is very different compared to what you guys did with uh, your self-titled album and Reckless? Yes, I think it's a, well. That was that was. A, I mean, everything is. It's kind of just evolved. Every record, you know, it's the third record we've done, and uh, it just it, it just keeps changing. I'm, and I'm real happy with it. So. Uh, I don't know. Uh, everything's got to change. <laughs> I want to do the same record. I want to do the same record over and over again. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, speak, speaking of, you know, the, the band's two previous albums, Reckless and the, the self-titled album, they, of course, made it to number two in, as, in the best bluegrass album charts, whereas Hammer Down actually made it to number one. And what do you think this album had compared to its predecessors? Uh, just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, everything's timing, everything, you know, it just depends on who has whatever out, um, you know. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, even though it's with us, it's still a marketplace. I mean, you know, it's whatever you're up against at the time, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of good artists out there, there's a lot of stuff going on, and, um, I, if I knew how, if I knew how it all worked, I'd already have it figured out, and, um, uh, I, I don't know what it'd be. <laughs> I've been the smartest guy in the world, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and you actually, you know, mentioned that uh, this album actually is the first one to feature two new members to the band, Brent Truitt and Gary Nichols. And what made you feel that they were the right men for the job? Well, uh, I've known Brent. Uh, we've known each other since we were about 16 years old. And uh, we played in another band together for about 14 years, uh, a band called Cluster Pluckers which was actually a really, uh, we, I 
I wouldn't call it a professional band. I mean, we're all professionals, but uh, I mean, everybody in it was awesome. And um, we did a lot of stuff. We played Austin City Limits. We did all kinds of stuff. Uh, Chet Atkins was a big friend of ours and a big backer. Uh, you know, he, uh, but the band, everybody had jobs. And um, well, except for me and Brent <laughs> and Blaine. Uh, so I've known Brent forever, uh, in other words. Just like everybody else in the Steel Riders, I've known Danny since she was probably 14 years old. Um, you know, me and I, I met Mike Fleming back when I was in college, so I was probably, you know, 20 years old. So we've known every, I've known everybody for 30 something years. So Brent was just right. I mean, when, um, when Mike uh, Harrison was in the band, he, he reached the point where he would not fly on an airplane anymore. So it, we had a lot of stuff booked, and it made it real difficult. So uh, I called Brent, and uh, he slept with us on, on those gigs. Uh, so he, he knew, coming into the band, he probably knew 70% of, the, of all the material because he worked those uh, gigs with his son. And like I said, I've known him, we've known each other. We're the same age, we've known each other forever. So it just made sense. And he's such a great player. He's a great engineer. He's, I mean, he's a two-time Grammy-winning uh, recording engineer. And uh, he's worked with everybody from Dolly Parton to the Dixie Chicks to, you know, just and Alice and Krauss and everybody else. He's just, he's a great person and he's an awesome player. And, and we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't have got luckier as far as uh, having somebody, you know. Oh, well, definitely. And, you know, when Adele started performing your song, If It Hadn't Been For Love, what did you guys make of it? What, what did I make of it? I thought it was awesome. It was especially awesome for uh, Mike Anderson and Chris uh, Stapleson because they wrote the song. So uh, it, it had to put, it had to, it had to buy some hot dogs. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, I, I definitely could see that. And, you know, we were talking about change earlier, you know, and as you know, Bluegrass's sister genre country has undergone many evolutions and changes stylistically throughout the years. And in what direction do you see Bluegrass going? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a style, it's a style of music. You know, it's like, it's not pop music. I don't, I don't expect it to ever be. You know, pop music is called pop music because it's popular. Uh, it's 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 like jazz or or uh, polka. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying. It's a, it has a, it's a niche. It's it's a form. Of, it's an art form. It's a it's a brand of music. It's a uh, style of music. Uh, as far as what I see happening with it, I think uh, you know these days with the internet, everybody has more access to everything. I mean, you can you can find whatever you want, and uh, so I think more people um, will be involved in it. Um, it's because it's more accessible, uh, uh, media uh, information-wise. It's, it's easier to hear it if you want to hear it. You can, you, you know, you can go straight to it. Where when I was growing up, if you wanted to hear it, you really had to search it out. Right. You had to go to or and and a lot of times you went to the record store and you couldn't. You just couldn't get it. I mean, even if you wanted it, you couldn't get it. <laughs> and like stuff is today, if you want it, there it is. You can get it. So that that doesn't hurt. Uh, well, that, I I definitely will agree with you. And what would you say you love most about being in a bluegrass band? <laughs> I guess because I love playing the banjo, and I've done it since I was a kid, and uh, and uh, that's why I like that's why I like bluegrass. Uh, it's it's a whole lot harder to play rock and roll on the banjo. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of, it's right in there. I, and I didn't get into the banjo uh, really to play bluegrass per se. I just loved the sound of the instrument. And I did play a lot of jazz when I was younger. And I still love jazz. I love I love everything. I love bit of everything. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just where it falls. You know, if you play the banjo, you better be able to play some bluegrass. Yeah, I, I def that is definitely true. And, uh, you know, you guys have already achieved so much with your music. At this point, what would you like to see the band achieve? I would, I would like it, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty happy where everything is. I, I'd like to see us play a little bit more. 
of course, you know, if you're making a living doing it, I would like to, you know, I'd like to pay my house off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's my goal right now, because I really love what we're doing. I love the music and I love the people I'm playing with. But uh, I guess if I had a goal, uh, just work a little bit more and, and uh, let me go ahead and pay my house off. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, as far as actually, you know, you were touching up there about playing a little bit more. Um, for the, as far as, you know, these upcoming months and so on are concerned, what are the band's plans as far as, you know, being on the road and touring? Okay. Well, we'll, we're about to go out to, uh, go up to Canada, go to Vancouver, and then do a little trip out uh, in the Northwest, I guess, in two weeks. And then, uh, gosh, you know, I really, I don't always tell you about two weeks ahead. <laughs> it's about all I can attack it. <laughs> right, well, and, and, and I'm a <laughs> Right, well, hey, that definitely sounds like some great plans indeed. And, uh, you know, and as far as uh, your fans and the listeners go, what would you like to say to them? I would like to say hi to everybody and uh, come see us. Um, come see us at a show, and uh, if, you, if you want to know what we're playing, if you go to the Steel Drivers website, which is uh, steeldrivers.com, or you can, we have a Facebook uh, page, uh, or you can go to steeldrivers.net, I think we're on both, yeah, both of them. And that has all the info, and, and we'll be, um, we'll be, where we'll be playing, and uh, we should be somewhere close to somebody uh, at any given moment. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be in the Northeast, we'll be in the Northwest, we'll be uh, down South, and uh, so, I mean, if you want to come see us, the info's on the internet, and we'd love to see you. Ah, and, you know, and I will definitely endorse that, uh, of course, you know, for all those who definitely want to catch a great show, definitely be sure to check the Steel Drivers out. And, uh, well, finally here, Richard, you know, I wanted to, of course, thank you so, so much for your time, and we're going to be seeing you out here with another great song off the Hammer Down album, which we'll be wearing a hole. And as uh, far as this song goes, any particular stories behind this one? Well, there's a, uh, there's actually a video that goes along with this song and with uh, I'll Be There. And you can find those, on, I guess, on YouTube or, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you can find them on, the, on my website or the band's website. You know, I'm sure they're on there. I rarely go to my own website because I, I usually know what's going on. <laughs> there, there's a video uh, with it. And uh, let's see, who's in... Uh, so, you know, James Trevor's in the video. Uh, Taylor Brashears is another great singer here in town. Uh, Brent uh, Labor, our, our two slam from Riders in the Sky. He's, he's doing a little on the bill of that and in there, so uh, it's kind of an entertaining video. And it, I love the song. It's a great hockey song song. It's by Mike, Ham Mike Henderson. Definitely an awesome song indeed. Well, we're going to be going into this great song. Richard, as I said before, thanks again for your time. And people, uh, you know, if you haven't checked the Steel Drivers out, be sure to check them out. They're definitely worth your time. Here is another great song from their latest album, Hammer Down. This will be Wearing a Hole. You are tuned into uh, the Whiskey and Cigarettes show with your Italian DJ Nick. We'll be right back after this. That was Due West with The Things You Can't Do in a Car. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your Italian cowboy and Romeo of the Rodeo, DJ Nick. And guess what, my friends? I am extremely privileged and very lucky to be in the company of two-thirds of this incredible trio, of course, of Due West. I am in the company of Tim Gates and Brad Hull from Due West. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, great. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks, guys. And um, may I say, it's definitely great to have you as guests on the show today. Well, we, we are happy to be here. Sorry that our, uh, our one-third couldn't be here. He, uh, he had a, another engagement that he had to be at, but uh, we're, we're just happy to be here and get to talk to you. <laughs> well, it's awesome to have you both. Well, um, you know, we just heard this great song, Things You Can't Do in a Car, and uh, I know it's among the very singers that did very well for you, and it's actually a non-album song, and what I wanted to know is, how come it didn't make it on the album? Well, that was uh, one that we released as a single when we were on a, a certain record label, and... Uh, that that record deal ended, and so we we were not able to take that song with us for the next project, and so we had to skip ahead to new music. And I and I know uh, this is Tim speaking. It, it, it can be frustrating because as a country fan, growing up listening to songs that would come out like singles, 
I remember a lot of times they'd re- the single would come out and I'd wait and wait and wait for the album and I never made it because they switched labels or whatever. So unfortunately, that's what happened with this one. But we're real proud of the song. Oh, it's definitely a great one indeed. And you know, and as far as your latest EP, Move Like That, goes, how would you guys describe it? Well, it was a step uh, of a little more progression for us. We uh, we found a bunch of outside songs. No- normally, we write a lot of songs ourselves, and this one we uh, we looked outside to the community in Nashville for for great songs, and we just felt that it was a really a kind of a step forward to where country radio is going, and and for us, it, it kind of was a stretch for us to try some new things so we really enjoyed making that record and, it, and it's done really well for us as an independent project oh well, and definitely a great one indeed and speaking actually of things you can't do in a car what are the craziest things you guys have done in a car hey man i actually did that with a 1966 chevy <laughs> i filled a full water and i went dragging me down my hometown and <laughs> there's all sorts of things you can do in a car, <laughs> but uh, lots of things you can't do in a car too, man. We uh, we we just all grew up in small farming towns, you know, in across the United States, and uh, and so we, you know, in small towns you really have to get creative, and so that's sort of what this song is about: is is all the fun things you do just to entertain yourselves, you know. Definitely, and I know that you guys decided to work with uh, Brandon Metcalf as far as this EP goes, and, as, and, as, and what made you guys decide to go with him, bearing in mind he was known mainly for being a rock producer at the time? I'll tell you what, uh, when we first met that guy, he had so much energy, and little did we know, he was already a Duet fan, so we went to his studio, and his vibe was way cool, and... and, and how connected he was in the music business um, already being in town. So we sat down with him, and he kind of put us on a little edge that we hadn't had before. So that's, that's, that's why we picked him. Right, and you have in fact defined the songs, you know, on the Move Like That album as the, and the, all the songs you've recorded with Brandon as the best songs you have ever recorded. Why would you say that? Well, you know, it was, uh, I think part of that has to do with we, we uh, looked outside for, for some new songs. We, we did record a couple of things that we had written, but we, we really tried to look for just the best songs that we could find, whether they were in our catalog or, or somebody else's. And we just really thought that it was a step towards uh, being more uh, competitive in the, in the commercial country music genre. Right. And, uh, you know, and moving from Move Like That, what do you guys have boiling in the cauldron for this year? I was saying, moving on from the uh, Move Like That EP, what do you guys have in the works for this year? Oh, man, look, right now we're, we're in Nashville getting ready to gear up for our summer tour. But while, while we're here in Nashville, we just we go downtown every day and write songs. We're working with a great producer right now, a great songwriter, um, Dean Dillon. And we're kind of collaborating with him, trying to come up with the best songs we can, put a little EP together for um, uh, next year and see what we can do with it. Right, and uh, you know, so far, as far as that goes, you know, um, would you say that the, the, this new material that we will be witnessing in about a year or so, would you say that it is um, uh, similar to what we've already received as far as Move Like That goes, or would you say you've taken your, your music into another direction once again? I, I think we probably are, are stretching ourselves again. Uh, it's, it's really interesting, from project to project, uh, you know, the music industry changes all around you, and this time, uh, we're kind of looking at making music that's maybe not so much commercial, but something that we really love and uh, something that just speaks to, to us musically, you know, and, and maybe that's got some reminiscence of, of some of our favorite influences of, of yesteryear, like uh, the Eagles or, or Crosby, Stills and Nash or, or different groups like that uh, that really show off harmonies. And so, you know, we it, it's always going to have its duet stamp on it, and, and it'll have the, the signature duet sound with the harmonies. But, you know, we, we will write different kinds of songs probably for this album that'll take us even in a different direction than last. 
Right, and you know, bearing in mind you guys are a trio, would you say that it's easy to get along amongst the three of you? <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's, uh, it, it is definitely. We've lasted 10 years, so uh, I'd say, yeah, it's pretty easy um, because there's always there's two of you that can team up on one guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we can always team up on the other. And uh, But, you know, the fun thing is, is we all have this, a lot of the same, same um, interest in music and... Uh, we sit around and pick and grin, and there's nothing like it. Oh, well, and that's great. And speaking, actually, you know, of, of your personal interests in music, what have you guys been listening to lately? Right now in my car, listen, man, I, I'm listening to Ricky Van Shelton 3. That's his third album, you know, a Statue of a Fool. I, I always go back to the throwback, but uh, Brad recently um, hit me up to some, uh, the brand new Jake Owen album, which is incredible. Oh, that's great that you get a combination of both old and new. I think that's brilliant. And uh, as far as, you know, uh, your fans and, uh, and our listeners go, what would you guys like to say to them? Well, we just want to tell them thank you, first and foremost, uh, for your support over the years. It's, it's really an awesome thing to be able to say that you've had a career in, in country music or any type of music for 10 years, and uh, that's all due to the fans. So we want to give a great big thank you. And uh, we, we hope that you stick her up along for the continuation of the ride due west. Well, then that definitely sounds great. And here's to another 10 years of due west for sure, guys. And you, you, so far, you have definitely uh, amazed us, and I'm sure that you will continue to do so. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, Nick. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And we, guys, we're going to be seeing you out here with another great song of yours, which will be uh, Slide On Over. And as far as this song goes, any particular stories behind this one? This is one of those songs that immediately caught all of us, and it's just, you know, a, a good old country love song, uh, just telling your girl to slide on over in that seat, and uh, let's, let's go for a ride, you know? Oh, and definitely a great one it is indeed. Well, guys, as I said before, thank you so, so much once again for your time, and best of luck with everything that's coming your way in 2014. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, my friends, you heard it from the guys themselves, Due West, awesome, awesome band indeed. If you haven't checked them out yet, be sure to do so. They're definitely worth your time. Here is another great song of theirs. This will be a slide on over. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your Italian DJ Nick. We'll be right back after this. That was the Oak Ridge Boys with Elvira. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show in the company of your Italian cowboy, your Romeo of the Rodeo, your Italian DJ Nick. And guess what, my friends? We are extremely privileged and extremely lucky to be in the company of the voice of the Oak Ridge Boys, Mr. Joe Bonzel. Hey, Joe, how are you? Well, Nick, I'm doing great. Great to talk to you, man. Thanks for playing Elvira. Well, hey, Joe, what can I say? Definitely a great, great song indeed, and it truly is an honor and a pleasure to have you with us on the show today. Well, thank you. Uh, we're, uh, we're way up in northern Michigan doing some shows up here, and uh, everything is going really good for the Oak Ridge Boys right now, Nick. It's great to talk to you. Oh, well, the pleasure is definitely ours. Well, Joe, the first thing I did want to ask you was, we just heard Elvira, you know, a song that, has done, that did really, really well for you, and is still doing very well for you to this day. And when you guys first came across it, what did you make of this song? Well, you know, we had all, we were all a little bit familiar with the song, Nick, because it had been written by Dallas Frazier in 1964, mm -hmm. and a few people had recorded it. Dallas himself had a, uh, a regional hit with it, and um, Rodney Crowell had a version of it. Kenny Rogers in the first edition had a, a real strange, minory version of it, Elvira, very strange. But so we kind of knew the song, but the idea that uh, Ron Chanty, our producer, came up with was that this song is perfect for the Oak Ridge Boys. We hadn't done anything like it up to that point. And we were working on this album in 1980. We had about 12 number one hits by then. And um, we hadn't had anything that sounded like this. So Ron's feeling was, let's, uh, let's take a shot at this song. Joe, you sing the lead. And let's have Richard do the Oom Papa Mau Mau's and see what happens. We had no idea, Nick, that this song was going to be the monster that it became. Oh, well, definitely. In fact, I mean, it definitely, like, as I said, did very, very well for you indeed. And, uh, you know, you have been in the Oak Ridge Boys for all 40 years of the band's life so far. And how does a band stay around for four decades successfully? 
Well, you know, we enjoy being the Oak Ridge Boys. I think all four guys have grown. We've grown together for our, our love and respect for each other is at an all-time high. Um, I think our goal is to keep on singing until God says to stop, and uh, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I said, you know, 40 years in the making you know, and still going strong. And of these four decades, which, of you, which would you say was your favorite? Well, now, that's a real hard one, man. I got to tell you, but because there's so many songs, Nick, that have, a, that have an impact on, on our lives and our career, especially. I, I get back to Y'all Come Back Saloon uh, in 77, our first big country hit, and how meaningful that was. And I remember when Sail Away and Dream On and Heart of Mine started getting contemporary airplay, contemporary adult airplay uh, uh, outside a country, which was very exciting for us. I remember when Elvira hit, and then Thank God for Kids and Bobby Sue. For me personally, though, I have to probably go with 1984's song, Never Hurts to Hurt Sometime. That was, a, that was a song that was very meaningful to me, and a young songwriter named Randy Van Warmer, who wrote so many great songs in Nashville for us and others, uh, who passed away not long after that. And so to me, that song's always been kind of special like that. Oh, and definitely a great one indeed. And, you know, recently you guys, of course, have released an all gospel album and yet another you know, great Christmas album. Are you planning on releasing a follow-up to uh, It's Only Natural? Well, our follow-up is our brand new Boys Live Out. Uh, I'm sorry, Boys Night Out Live that, uh, that released on April 15th. That is what we're excited about right now because we've never put out a live album. Cleopatra Records came out, and, you know, they're the biggest independent record label in the world. And they said, we would love to release a live album of Big Oak Ridge Boy hits worldwide on CD, MP3, and vinyl. And I've got to tell you, Nick, this album came out great. It's brand new out there, and uh, uh, it's, it's the way we sound right now, singing the biggest songs we've ever had. We are excited about Boys Night Out. You can download it at iTunes, buy the vinyl, man, on Amazon. I mean, I think that's so cool that they're coming out in vinyl. What a full circle for us, right? I, oh, mean, yeah. I mean, I think we were there when vinyl was invented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, you've seen so many different evolutions, you know, of course, from vinyl to CD and MP3 now. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely have come full circle indeed. And, you know, and re releasing a live album, you know, I mean, when it actually came to doing that and so on, I mean, who actually, you know, came up with the idea of wanting to do that? And you know, how did you go about, you know, choosing the song, the, the, the playlist you guys wanted to have on it? Well, you know, we have a different set list every single night, and we have so many songs to sing. And about a year ago, it was Dwayne Allen, our lead singer's idea, to, you know, his feeling was, you know, we're not the young guys on the block no more, but, man, we are still singing good right now. Let's take some equipment out there, and let's start recording live shows, man, so we have them down for, prosper for posterity's sake or something, because we're really on it. So we started recording live songs even before Cleopatra got involved. In fact, our manager, Jim Halsey, was in discussion with Cleopatra Records about a possible collaboration when, the, when it came up that we were doing these live shows, and everybody got excited about a possible boys' night out. Now, I've got to tell you, we have about 62 songs live in the can. We picked 14 for this album, of our 14, obviously, of our biggest and uh, y'all come back saloons there, leaving Louisiana, Elvira, Bobby Sue, Thank God for Kids, Make My Life With You. There's a bunch of familiar songs, American made. But we still have a lot more that we could release. And I don't know what direction we're going to go exactly with Cleopatra, if we're going to release more live albums or do a new album full of new songs. We have, enough, we have enough songs in the can to put out a box set, is what I'm saying. And we may someday do that. But for right now, the focus is on Boys Night Out to see how well it does. Uh, well, and that's definitely great, and I think it would be awesome, you know, to be able to come out with a box set like that. I'm sure the fans would definitely eat that up and then some. And, uh, you know, speaking actually of touring and such, uh, one of our listeners from the UK, Kay, who actually wanted to know if you are planning on coming to Great Britain anytime soon. You know, that's a good question. We have not been to the United Kingdom in several decades. We haven't been overseas in several decades. And with the release of Boys Night Out and the worldwide influence that Cleopatra has, and with a lot of the press and interviews we're doing all around Europe, I think it's a very strong possibility that next year we will indeed do a European tour. And uh, it would definitely be great to have you back here in the old continent. And, you know, as, you know, you guys have been around now for 40 years and have seen it all pretty much. And have you come across any bands of today that you feel could be the heirs of the Oak Ridge Boys, you know, a band that you could maybe pass the torch on to someday? 
We know there's a lot of great artists out there, Nick, and your your listeners in the UK certainly are well aware of the fact that country music in the United States and around the world is bigger than it's ever been. And I think that's because of some of these great young artists that have taken country to a new level. A lot of these kids are are, are they're younger, they're faster, <laughs> and uh, and so many of them out there uh, are, are leaving a legacy of their own. As far as uh, any groups that are going to last for 40-some years, that's really hard to tell. Uh, will there be a Lady Annabellum or a Zach Brown band 40 years from now? Will, 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 uh, uh, will Keith still be picking? Will Miranda? Will Blake? Any of the big names of country today still be playing 40 years from now? I think it's possible. And, um, you know, Miranda's really young, and look at the incredible career she's had. And I, there's no quitting that girl. Miranda Lambert could still be singing uh, 40 years from now, just like a, a Dolly Parton or a, or a Tammy Wynette, I guess. But I don't know. It's really hard to tell. One thing I do have a lot of respect for European audiences, and Great Britain in particular, and the U.K. in particular, is that people over there seem to have a lot of respect for tradition. They, and, you know, your country is so much older than ours, Nick. And uh, you, you have a respect for going back and a respect for history and what it takes to get from point A to B to C in history. And therefore, your musical taste over there, although you love the new stuff, there's a lot of people over there, and I hear from a lot of folks in the U.K. that love that love the tradition, that love the fact that the Oak Ridge Boys have been around for a long time and they've heard us for a long time. I really think going over there at this point in our career would be very, very big for us. And I think people would welcome us, and um, I, I hope this all works out. Oh, well, I definitely hope so, too. I'm sure, you know, the European audience as a whole would definitely, you know, welcome you back with open arms, uh, Joe. And, uh, you know, we talked about all this great stuff, and, you know, you outside of songwriting are also an author, and you've already come out with quite a few books. And are you working on yeah. any new books? You know, right now, Nick, I've got an idea, and I've had a publisher approach me with an idea of doing a new, fresh book on the Oak Ridge Boys. Now, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called An American Journey, 30 Years on the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys. And it was a really well-done book with a lot of pictures, and I thought I did some good writing in that book, to be honest with you. And, of course, the biggest book I've written is a book, is a book called G.I. Joe and Lily, which is a World War II romance story about based on the life of my parents. And that was a big seller uh, around the world. But I've been talking about doing this new, up-to-date Oak Ridge Boys book that would be not so much a book of history, but a book about the Oak Ridge Boys now and how we operate now and how we get along and do things now, much like what you and I are talking about. So as Joseph S. Bonzel, my author name, people can find my books at Amazon and so forth. But um, as Joseph S. Bonzel, I am right now gathering ideas for a possible new book on the Oak Ridge Boys. Wow. And that, that is definitely great. I mean, do you, and so um, do you already have, uh, as far as that goes, I mean, how far along is that project now? It's in its infancy right now. I, uh, this, 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 a very huge American publishing company called Harvest House has approached me with this idea. And I'm starting to put some ideas down right now. I've been working on it every day for about the last four days to give them an outline and an idea of, of my vision for the book and see if it coincides with their vision right. uh, for the book. So it's in its infancy right now. And I'd say if this book comes out, it would be in 2015. All right. Well, then we definitely have something great to look forward to, to for next year as well. And finally here, when it comes to uh, the, the remainder of the 2014, uh, what would you say um, you guys have set your sights on for, you know, to, and want to accomplish by the end of the year? Well, right now, uh, we do a gigantic Christmas tour here in America uh, at the end of uh, the year every year. And our big Christmas tour is already taking shape. Uh, we'll probably play 30 cities with a full Oak Ridge Boys Christmas show. Uh, from the end of uh, from Thanksgiving to, to Christmas. And before that, right now, we are playing a lot of fa uh, big fairs and festivals here, a lot of beautiful theaters. We are going to have a very busy year of touring and promoting Boys Night Out. And um, I guess that would probably be the thrust of our focus. Now, we'll, I will let you in on something new. Um, are you familiar with Bill Gaither and the Gospel folks? Yes, indeed. Well, you know, Bill Gaither and his, his uh, gospel label, Spring Hill, and, and, and already Cleopatra has said this would not interfere with anything we're doing as far as what they're doing, uh, wants us to do a, a hymns album and a video of the Oak Ridge Boys singing the old hymns of the church, done real acoustic-driven, 
and uh, songs like The Old Rugged Cross and In the Garden. Now, that's just been the talking stage right now. But it's possible that this summer we may earmark a little time to go in the studio and record some of the great old hymns. And I think that that could be really cool because with our four-part harmony and our gospel background, uh, I think we could do some justice to songs like In the Garden and, you know, the Leaning on the Everlasting Arms and some of the old gospel hits. And, you know, gospel is our roots and heritage. It's always fun to go back and visit uh, gospel music and lend our, our voices to it. And um, I think it might be a fun project that's kind of on the side of everything else we're doing this year. Oh, well, hey, then that would be great. Yes, and indeed, you know, you guys have always, you know, have pretty much, you know, showcased your, shall we, shall we say, spiritual side throughout your career. And actually, speaking yes. of which, um, we, I uh, asked this question to, to Andy Griggs a few months back. When it comes to the spiritual side of country, do you feel it is still there or do you feel that country today has somewhat lost its soul? You know, I don't, I, I don't know that country has lost its soul because I know that a lot of the kids that we talked about earlier in the interview that are singing today have a lot of love and respect for, for, for God and for God in the, working in their lives and for the tradition that's come on before them. And um, I, I don't think it's lost its soul. I think it's a little bit different. The musical, the music pendulum swings back and forth all the time, but spirituality is an individual thing. And I know that the Oak Ridge boys are, are good Christian men that try to live by great values. And I know a lot of the kids today do, do that as well. Well, and that's great to hear. And, uh, you know, finally, Joe, any uh, words for uh, our listeners out there and all the Oak Ridge Boys fans out there? Well, I thank you. I know we're a long way from uh, you folks, and uh, but a lot of you have been so faithful. Thanks to Twitter and Facebook and, and websites, like we have our OakridgeBoys.com. We're at Oak Ridge Boys on Twitter. Um, we're individually on Twitter, at Joe Bonzel, for instance, on Twitter. And we have a big Facebook presence uh, at facebook.com slash Oak Ridge Boys. And we are able to, thanks to social networking in this day and age, stay in touch with so many of our friends from the UK. And we do have a strong following there, people that care about the Oak Ridge Boys and appreciate what we have done all these years. And um, I want to thank them for that love and support. It means a lot because to me, the United Kingdom more than anywhere else is, is like brothers and sisters to, to, to us over here. And um, I know, and when I see the Martina McBride or Carrie Underwood or, 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 or someone is touring Europe, I always feel good about them doing that. And I always kind of envy them doing it and hope that we get to come too. I guarantee you, if we get over there next year, we're going to have a party with those longtime friends of the Oak Ridge Boys. Oh, well, and we definitely look forward to it. Well, Joe, all, I, all that's left to hear from me to say is, you know, thank you so, so much for your time. I really, really appreciated it. Thanks so much for these 40 years of music. And, uh, and then finally, you know, best of luck with everything you guys have going and uh, continued success with what you do. Thank you, Nick. I wish you the same and all of your listeners out there. God bless England and I will and and everywhere in the United Kingdom and I can't wait to get over there to sing to you fine folks. Thank you. Oh, we definitely look forward to it. Well we are gonna be seeing you out here with another great song of the Oak Ridge Boys, another one that you know was huge for you guys, which will be American made. And as far as this song goes, any particular stories behind this one? Nick, which one are you playing? American made. Oh, American Made. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, I, I love American Made. Uh, some good friends of ours in Nashville wrote that song. And it's one of those kind of Oak Ridge Boys songs where you um, where we throw the lead around, you know, being a four part group like we are. Everybody can sing here. It ain't like you've got one singer and three backup guys. Everybody sings. And this is one of those songs that gave us an opportunity for everybody to have a little piece of it. And then everybody gather up on the chorus. And it's a really cool chorus. And um Hey, man, I hope you folks in the U.K. don't mind us singing about them American-made girls. They are pretty, you know. <laughs> we'll definitely agree with you on that one, Joe. Well, thanks again. And uh, you heard it from the man himself, my friends. Definitely an awesome, awesome man is Joe Bonsall, an awesome band are the Oak Ridge Boys. Sure to uh, continue your support of them as they definitely deserve it. Here is another great song of theirs. This will be American Made. You are tuned into the Whiskey and Cigarettes show. We'll be right back after this. For more information on the Whiskey and Cigarettes Show, you can check us out at whiskeyandcigarettesshow.com. We'll catch you on the next conversation. <laughs> 